Hey all, here are OS Reviews. Today we're taking a closer look at the Mealy Quieter 2Q. This is a mini PC that, as the name implies, is a completely quiet or fanless unit, so there isn't going to be any noise in the background. Portability is one of its key features as well that can fit in the palm of your hand, and it sells around 250 bucks, so pretty entry level as far as Windows-powered mini PCs are concerned. The base model that we have here has 128 gigs of eMMC storage, and there is an upgraded version that sells for 25 bucks more that has 256 gigs. So I would slightly recommend that version if you need more storage out of the box. However, both of them will have the same processor, which is the Intel Celeron J4125. It's quad core and clocked at two gigahertz, along with having eight gigs of built-in DDR4 RAM, which are both sufficient for a entry-level model. It also comes with a VESA mount, so you can attach it onto the back of any monitor or TV pretty easily. And it does have plenty of IO that we can see there supports 4K HDMI output, along with having Windows 10 Pro Edition installed, dual band Wi-Fi, along with Ethernet as well, so you can use wired internet if you prefer. Now in terms of the packaging, it is quite simple. We have some of the features that are reiterated again on the edge. Fanless not only means quiet, but it also means less moving parts, so potentially it can make it last a little bit longer. And this is not specific to the Quieter 2Q, but one thing I do want to see improved, maybe in budget mini PCs, in the future would be using Bluetooth 5.0, since it's been out for a while now, and there is kind of a sticker on top that I want to briefly read. Uh, it, it claims that this fanless PC dissipates heat into the air through the housing containing heat dissipating material, and so the surface of the product may get warm while running CPU intensive programs. However, the mini PC is designed with a patented thermal dissipation system to prevent itself from overheating and otherwise the mini PC does not contain a power delivery controller so it should be used with the maximum voltage of the included 26 watt adapter. The latter there is a good reminder but I do think that again maybe in the future they could also support kind of universal compatibility with type C ports and that would make it even more versatile and it's really only used for power so it doesn't supply uh, let's say another connection for video output or even for data but other other accessories that you get here in the box will include the aforementioned mounting bracket as well as the AC adapter which has the prongs which can be removed. So we have the US based prong here attached by default, and just a type C port on the other end. So it is easy enough to put into a, a bag, for example, and take it with you when on the road. And finally, there is just a quick start guide. Taking a closer look at the mini PC, as aforementioned, it is really compact, especially compared to other models that we've seen in the past that has similar chipsets, usually looks like this. And this is already considered a compact mini computer. Mealy Quieter 2Q is essentially just kind of half the size, in fact, even smaller than that. So it really is quite impressive how much they were able to kind of further shrink down on the size. It already is slimmer than a US quarter, as you can see there. In fact, it's even smaller in terms of dimensions than an average smartphone these days. So really easy to kind of put into a backpack uh, or just kind of take with you even in a pocket if you have to, and it will fit there. So very lightweight, but the body is well constructed out of a fusion between metal. So again, all the edges and sides are made out of metal to dissipate heat, but there are some soft touch rubber accents on top of the portion here uh, to make it feel a little bit grippy. So overall, very solid construction. And in terms of uh, the I.O., we have just a simple power key on the front, along with three USB 3.0 ports, which is great. And they're well-spaced, so you can plug them all in at the same time. They don't really interfere with each other in my testing. And then finally, on the rear, we have a fourth USB 3.0 port, a micro SD card slot reader, which is great. There is a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary port to connect to headphones or speakers, the two full-size HDMI ports, the Type-C for power, and the full-size Ethernet. Even though this thing is absolutely tiny, you can still take out the screws onto the the back here and that will leave you access to a SSD slot where you can connect a standard M2 SSD if you want to further expand. Uh, one thing to keep in mind here again is the built-in memory by default is a eMMC drive as opposed to a full SSD. So having an SSD does usually mean slightly faster read and write speeds. So that is another area where they were able to cut costs a little bit more. Taking a closer look at the performance, we are greeted to an extremely stock version of Windows 10 Pro Edition. Setup takes less than five minutes to complete, and a cold boot up of the mini PC takes just 15 seconds to turn on. Afterwards, if we take a quick look at the file manager, we'll see that out of the 
the about 128 gigs of storage, we have roughly 88.6 gigs left after the operating system is installed. So that's sufficient for most Office documents and lighter programs, but if you're trying to install, let's say, big games, you have to keep that in mind. Uh, you can try to expand it using, let's say, external thumb drive or something like that using cloud storage. It is extremely clean. In fact, we don't even have to log in with a Microsoft account when you first sign in into Windows, so you basically get just the standard utility tools. Otherwise, Navigating the UI is relatively snappy and quick, so in terms of opening up things like files and documents, it's not too sluggish or slow. There may still be a couple moments of hiccups, which is not unexpected considering that we are still talking about a relatively entry-level processor, but generally speaking, you'll be satisfied with the overall navigation experience. Jumping into Microsoft Edge, uh, we can take a closer look at the web browsing um, experience, and overall the loading times as well as the Wi-Fi reception strength both seem to be quite good, so right now it's getting us around 3 bars of reception, even though we are a little bit further away from the router, it supports dual band 2.4 and 5G wireless, and overall pages load in a reasonable time. You can see that scrolling, uh, most of the images and text will be more or less rendered after a second or so, even though this is a fairly complex desktop version of the page with lots of ads and elements, but overall definitely not bad when it comes to being able to use this for things like document reading, browsing the web, things like that. We can try opening up another tab, in fact. Let's jump into, let's say, Amazon and uh, see how that takes to load. 8 gigabytes of built-in RAM is also sufficient for multitasking when it comes to opening up, let's say, around 10 uh, to 15 tabs in the browser. I was still able to hop back and forth between these pages, and they were held in the memory without too many complaints. Same thing goes if we're trying to watch back YouTube videos. So here I have a clip uh, that is going to be bumped up to 4K resolution here in a moment, and let's tap on play and see if it will kind of play playback smoothly, and in fact it will take a moment or two to buffer at the beginning, but after it starts loading back it's really not bad, and everything is still looking quite smooth and responsive. We can jump into another portion of the video, again taking another second for it to kind of snap into focus, but in terms of streaming back 4K content as well as loco 4K content, uh, it seems to handle without too much issues, which is great. So you can watch Ultra HD videos, whether it's YouTube or Netflix, and it has enough power here to act as a uh, performing those tasks for entertainment purposes. Uh, we can also try scrolling a little bit, and it's not going to be 100% buttery smooth, maybe versus a more powerful machine, but certainly won't get you in the way of doing the things that you need to do, and uh, still feels powerful enough, snappy enough, that it doesn't get annoying or really in the way of you enjoying the overall experience. Again, it's still a relatively energy efficient processor, so if you're playing back 4K videos along with opening up a lot of other programs and apps, expect that the CPU utilization will definitely spike and jump a bit, and since this is a truly fanless machine, again it is totally quiet, which is great, so there is no background noise at all, ultra silent, but again when you are doing these more taxing events on the GPU and the processor, such as watching back 4K videos for more than, let's say, 15 minutes, it does get quite warm on the top of the machine, so not something I would recommend holding in your hand, for example, while you are using. Um, otherwise, we can see that again. Right now, we have about uh, five or so tabs open, taking up around 55% of our RAM, and here it's worth noting that this CPU has a score on average of around 3033, which is decent. It's a little bit higher than some of the other budget mini PCs that are also popular in this price range of around $200 or so, such as the Celeron N3450. We've seen this very commonly used on a lot of other mini PCs and even budget laptops, and it's still used today. Um, this one here has a score of around 1930, so it's under 2k. So out of the kind of trio and uh, similar options, this one is going to be a little bit faster. It's not quite to the tier of some Core M series as well as Core I series chipsets, but uh, this score will still allow us to do those basic tasks like browse the web, watch back videos, as we saw there, uh, with relative ease. As part of the Celeron line, it's one of the more powerful uh, models and seems to be doing all right. Same story continues with Office and Document Editing, again a computer in this price range can handle these tasks without any problems. So if you wanted to open up and create an Excel document, for instance, it's relatively fast to load, even slightly more complex ones with pivot tables and lots of different uh, fields and columns. You can see everything is still just working 
without really any problems. Uh, so in terms of office document editing, using it for some light work as well as school work, it uh, can be handled fairly fast and quick even as you're scrolling about the page. As with any Windows computer, it does have the ability to install any legacy games, any EXEs or executables that you can download from any browser from the internet and you have the option of installing drivers for millions of different products uh, that is going to be an advantage compared to newer OS's like Chrome OS in addition to using the Microsoft Store where you can find uh, even more optimized applications and games uh, that have been kind of approved from Microsoft so these are even going to be lighter and uh, have more of a modern interface so there's a lot of different um, applications here for entertainment uh, you can also leverage different uh, cloud services such as let's say game Game Pass to even play back some Xbox games if you have that subscription and you don't even have to necessarily play it on the device itself in terms of its processor. It's basically streaming it using the cloud. Um, other services like Google's Stadia will do the same thing. Basically using this as just a monitor and a portal to the games and as long as you have a fast enough internet connection it will be playable uh, using cloud gaming services. And uh, if you are playing back games locally installed on the device's memory itself, then definitely keep those titles lighter. You can't really play any AAA titles, otherwise it's not going to be the best experience, but again, expect it. It's not a gaming machine. Uh, but anything which is more moderate, things like Minecraft, uh, things which are, uh, are going to be lighter like Candy Crush, um, can definitely be installed and run without really any complaints. And I tried out a very quick test using this uh, built-in video editor tool, and when I was trying to merged together a clip that was around five minutes long in full HD 1080p resolution, it took around five minutes or so to also export. So it's not going to be the fastest to render uh, or really be a video editing machine. So again, that's expected due to the integrated graphics that they're using, not really a powerful GPU. Uh, that's when things will shine for things like video editing and gaming as well. So keep those things in mind. But for lighter tasks such as creative uh, Photoshop editing, which are going to be lighter with fewer layers. Uh, things like that for image touching up it certainly can do. So that's more or less it as far as our review of the Mealy Quieter 20 Mini PC. Again there are some really good attributes of this machine. For one the fact that it is truly silent and fanless is impressive. So if you are in an environment where you don't want any noise at all, no distractions, this will definitely fit the bill. Having plenty of I.O. for a mini PC uh, is also great. Performance again is satisfactory. It's nothing out of really the expectations for a low-end mini PC. So you're not going to be able to do, let's say, AAA gaming locally on it. However, things that it does do well include watching back videos. Web browsing was great, even with lots of tabs open, in addition to juggling things like office document editing and also some Photoshop. And if you're interested, you can check out more details in the links below. For now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching.